today we're going to share how we're planting up this really cute little wire hanger super easy and simple i'm going to show you how we're going to plant it up and use some sphagnum moss and some of our leftover flowering annuals to fill in this little guy to add some color to the kids science shed for hanging this wire container i'm going to pre-drill some holes and get the screws in there right away so that way once it's all planted and kind of messy we're not fiddling around with uh, trying to get it to hang up here so that way the screws will already be in there so all I'm doing is hanging it up making some marks and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill in the screws I have a little piece of plastic that I'm gonna put between the wire container and this house so it doesn't cause any rotting on the exterior of this little house so I already lined up the holes with this piece of plastic I'm gonna place it right here and I'm gonna drill the screws right into the plastic so the screws kind of hold that plastic in so it's not blowing around for when I go ahead and hang it so now I'm just gonna make sure that it fits and hangs properly before we go ahead and plant it up so, so we know it sits on there really nice and once there's weight in there it'll really hold into there good in this bucket here, we have our sphagnum moss. I've been soaking it for 20 minutes. So all I did was fill up a pail with water and toss in our dry sphagnum. And when it's wet, it's so much easier to shape and work with to line a nice little wire container. This is what the sphagnum moss looks like when you allow it to soak. It's nice and wet and it can be like shaped really well. So um, what I like to do is take the stuff from the bottom and kind of flip it because that's been soaking in the water even better. And that's what I'll start working with first. Lana wants to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> it's messy, right? At least it's not that messy. It's like swamp like grass. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and place it in there. I'm gonna first start just right on the bottom here. And I'm gonna lay it in there a little heavier so that way it kind of just builds upon each other a little bit. As I place it in here, I'm using my hand on the outside and kind of pushing it against because what we're doing is we're just shaping it because once this does dry, it dries in that shape. So it's not gonna be coming out of the holes of the wire. Another option for a wire container is also some coconut liner, which is really pretty too. But there's just something about the messy moss that just looks that much more natural. And um, I just feel like it's more of a whimsical look as well for the kids' little science shed. Kind of like fairies, right, Lana? Yeah. This reminds you of little fairies. <laughs> Get in here. Can you feel it? Feel good? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got all of the wire covered with the sphagnum moss, but there are some areas up here that I will kind of touch up a little bit as I start adding some soil in. I want to start adding some soil in to kind of create it to um, give it more of like a structure to hold up against because this area back here kind of leans forward just a little bit so it could easily quickly fall over that sphagnum moss and we don't want that to happen so by filling it now with some potting soil um, that will be able to kind of hold and stand up that side a little bit and once the sphagnum moss dries it really just shapes in there and it shouldn't fall out at all throughout the whole season um, and that's that's what's so cool it already looks so neat and, and natural and just just has like a really unique gardening feel so um, let's let's continue on with the potting soil Now that I got my soil up to this point, I'm going to go back in now and touch up some of the sphagnum moss around the upper area of the wire and around the edging here. Now that the sphagnum moss is touched up along the whole upper part of the wire, I'm going to go in and just Fill it to the surface with some more potting soil. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add some Osmocote, which all that is, is time release fertilizer. Okay, and then I'm gonna mix it into the first top four to six inches of the soil. This can last up to, this one here can actually last up to almost six months, they say. Um, it's the Osmocote Plus. And um, I still go ahead and fertilize with our Jack's Bloom Booster Fertilizer, which we'll put the link for that in the description of this video for you. Um, and we go ahead and fertilize through the water every third or fourth time that we water our containers. Every year when we seed start and grow our own flowers, and even when we go and buy flowers from a garden center, we always make sure to do extra and we keep extra going all season long just for projects like this, where we feel like there maybe needs to be an extra container or if something in the garden um, dies off or retires, we have something to fill in with it, whether it's a flower or an edible. And so right here are some of our leftovers and this is when we start getting a little bit more creative because we don't have hundreds of varieties to choose from. We only have so many and whatever's left is left. So. Today we are going to make a cute little combination and I probably won't use all of these, but as I go, I'll start planting and tell you what we're using. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and start off with are some seed geraniums. This is the Pinto Violet. Um, what I love about this is how vibrant they are and they look a little scrawny, I know, but they are so ready to move up into a larger space to grow. So I have a feeling that they're gonna take off pretty quickly and we've got two of them. So I'm gonna just space them evenly and kind of towards the center of the container. And they are kind of that medium height. So they'll get about, you know, 14 to 16 inches, including blooms. Um, so I think this is the perfect spot for them. I always like to go ahead and break up some of that root. Right here we have a very beautiful lantana. It's by Proven Winners. It's the luscious Royal Cosmo. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this right in the middle. I am so grateful I was able to find this in some of our saving areas because we get a lot of hot sun over there and these guys love the hot sun. So this will just add that little bit of a tropical flower. And we're gonna place this right in the middle because it gets 12 to 26 inches. So it's kind of like it'll get just a little higher than those seed geraniums. Those seed geraniums will be about here. And then we're gonna kind of just work off of that. And since this is only gonna be seen from the front, we're gonna do the tall in the back and work our way forward like a waterfall. Luckily, I had just a few little dreamland zinnias left. So we're gonna pop those in the back right over here because on this side, this is where we're gonna hang it. So. Like I said, we're gonna keep the tall in the back. So I thought that this would be a great little addition with extra little bright color with these little zinnias. Next, we're gonna add a trailer, and this one I'm gonna add right in the front. I love this beautiful lime green color. It's a Proven Accents by Proven Winners. It's a sweet potato vine. This one is called the Sweet Caroline, which kind of always reminds me of that song. Sweet Caroline. Do, Come on, do, do. <laughs> Wasn't sure if I was supposed to talk in this video or not. <laughs> I know you were waiting to kick in on that one. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and place the Sweet Caroline right in front. The next variety we're going to use is a trailing Lobelia. This is Techno Electric Blue, one of my favorites. It can take the hot heat and full sun. And uh, we're going to add this right on to this corner right over here. So we're going to add a little touch of blue. For the, for the kids area, I always love using multi-colors. Um, but who am I kidding? I use multi-colors everywhere, but in here it's like the colors are unlimited. The colors of the rainbow for the kids. There we go. There we go. And this will add some bushiness and trailing off this side over here. 
So this is a new bit in for us this year. It's a beautiful large flower with a double. Um, this bit in is called Goldilocks and it's by Proven Winners. It's a beautiful trailer. Um, it looks a little rough right now just because we've been holding on to it for so long in that little pot. But once we plant it up, it'll take off and do gorgeous. Um, so I'm really excited to add this bright sunny yellow color for the girls. It just reminds me of a little touch of happiness and of a sunny day. And uh, anytime the girls are over there, it always feels like a sunny day, even if it's a rainy day, because they have so much fun and happiness and positivity. And I just feel like this variety right here gives you all of that. Right now you could be absolutely done, but if you know me at all, you know that I am an overstuffer. So I'm going to go ahead and just add in a few bright colored orange Little Hero Marigolds right here. And they are so vibrant, it almost is like you need sunglasses to look at them. But I'm just going to pop them in a little bit, just some of our extras, so I figure why not? As it grows in, you at least have that extra little additional color uh, for fun. I'm going to place my first one right here. And yes, this may get taken over by this sweet Caroline sweet potato vine over here. But for now, until that takes off, this will give us a show. And I'm going to place some right back here, which I do not think that this one here will get taken over. It'll kind of fill in the top of that bidden as the bidden fills in going forward. It'll fill in the top area here and kind of the lower half of this Dreamland Zinnia. And we're going to go ahead and do the same right over here. Just add that little pop of orange there. And over here on this side of the labelia, in between the labelia and the dreamland zinnia, we're just going to stuff it right in there. And there we go. That is our wall hanger recipe. Super easy, super simple. You could even do less if you want to, but... Uh, I think this already looks like it's beautiful just as it. It looks amazing. <laughs> now it's time to go hang it. So what I'm going to do is kind of flip it this way. So that way I'm holding on to it in a direction where I can just go ahead and hang it. Because right now it's pretty heavy. That moss is still really wet. So it's kind of like carrying around that wet pail. <laughs> so let's go see if I can do this. I might need Jason's help. <laughs> It worked. it worked. It worked. It's a success. Yep. So there we go. Take a look. Oh, that looks so cute. What I always do with all of my combinations is I always save all of the tags together and I place them right in the back of the container. That way, if there's one that you absolutely love and you forget a variety that's in there, you have that bundle of tags to always refer back to. So even at the end of the season, when I dump out a lot of our containers, I rubber band them up and I bring them in the house so I, I have them just in case I want to duplicate that same variety the next year. My gloves may be dirty, but the great thing about Diggs gardening gloves is that I can wash them, dry them, and wear them again. Well, thank you so much for watching this video today, guys. Hope you guys got some good ideas or maybe learned something new. If you don't already subscribe, feel free to click the subscribe button and don't forget to click that bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day.